In this video, we'll be going over how to row reduce a matrix to get into row echelon form and reduce row echelon form. So you get a set of equations with three variables, x, y, and z, and these are equal to constants. Now it's time to put these numbers into a matrix. Let's first put the constants in front of the x variable in the first column. We will then put the constants in front of the y variable in the second column. The constants in front of the z variable will go into the third column. And finally, we'll put the constants on the other side of the equal sign in the fourth column. The goal with row reduction is to get a number one in each of the rows going down at a diagonal with all zeros in the left bottom corner of the matrix. This is known as row echelon form. We then want to further reduce this matrix to have zeros above the diagonal. This is known as reduced row echelon form. The diagonal number ones are known as pivots. Now we are ready to start the row reduction. There are three different ways you can manipulate the rows to reduce them. One, you can switch the rows or reorder the rows. Two, you can multiply a row by a non-zero number. Three, you can add one row to another row. Let's begin by working on column one. So I see a one in row two, so let's move row one to the bottom and move row two and row three up. Now let's take row 2 and add a negative 2 times row 1 to get a 0 in the column 1 of row 2. So for the first entry, we take 2 plus negative 2 times 1 and we get 0. For the second entry, we take 6 plus negative 2 times 5 and we get negative 4. For the third entry, we take 5 plus negative 2 times 9 and we get negative 13. And finally, for the fourth entry, we take 3 plus negative 2 times 2, and we get negative 1. These new values for row 2 now replace the old values in the matrix. We will then do something similar to row 3 by adding a negative 3 times row 1. So now we have all zeros in column 1 below the 1 in row 1. For our next step, we want to get a 1 in column 2, row 2. Let's multiply row 2 times negative 1 fourth. Next, let's take row 3 and add 14 times row 2 to get a 0 in column 2, row 3. Now we need to get a 1 in row 3, column 3. We can do this by multiplying row 3 times 1 over 22.5. We have officially reached row echelon form. To further the reduction, let's work towards reduced row echelon form. This means that above each pivot, there is a zero in the above and below rows. So we will first take row one plus negative five times row two. This makes it so there is a zero in row one, column two. Next, let's work on getting zeros above the pivot in row three, column three. We can take row one plus 7.25 times row three to get a zero in row one. Our final reduction to get a zero in row two, column three, we will take row 2 minus 3.25 row 3. We have reached reduced row echelon form. Now this means that we can take the pivot in column 1 and multiply it times x, the pivot in column 2 and times it by y, and the pivot in column 3 and times it by z. We can now see that x is equal to 0.267, y is equal to 0.466, and z is equal to negative 0.066. I recommend if you're working out one of these problems to go online and look up an online calculator for row reduced forms to ensure that you have done all of your math correctly. You can also plug the x, y, and z that we just found into the original formulas to see if you get the same constant that the formulas are equal to. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it helped. Hopefully I've earned a like, share, or subscription. If you like this video, you may enjoy one of these videos as well.